with Artist to Heart Paint Party, you have to customize it. Make something that you like. Make it personal to you. However that is. Oh! <laughs> That's so cute! I love his little hat. You could be painting your bunny in. I just, so this is a pretty spring bunny and I think that nice, lighter, you know, softer colors look really nice for spring pastel. As big or as small as you want. Hey Nisi. Hey Rach. Can you slow down a little bit? Sure thing. Actually, I thought it was almost looking like a butterfly, but uh, I thought it would be cool and I had an apple today, so I saved the core. <laughs> That's a great. I wasn't sure if it would work or not, but I thought I'd give it a try. Yeah, I really like that you're reusing the material that may not seem to have a purpose. It might have otherwise been thrown out. Right. Well, hi, you guys. <laughs> I'm Denise with Artist at Heart, and I am so excited to be here with you and make some autumn blue pumpkins. What do you guys think? Do you think blue pumpkins are real? They are. They are real, you guys. Yeah, they. you can even grow them if you want to. I'd rather buy them. I like going to the you know, nursery and uh, buy my, I just want to make sure everybody's in. Everybody could see me. I hope. Yay. Are you guys here? Hi, everybody. Yay. Give me a shout out if you're here. So I know you made it. Okay. So you guys, I always like to start with a sloppy copy. You know it. So uh, today my format is going to be vertical. But you know what? Before I start, I want to give you guys some other ideas because you know I love when you guys customize your artwork and make it your own. So you want to do orange pumpkins? Do orange pumpkins. You want to put a face on it? Put a face on it. I just thought that this blue with like the rustic fence in the background was kind of cool. And you know what? Later, I'm going to try something different. Now, where did I put it? Oh, yeah. If you guys have a plastic fork, Okay, grab a plastic fork because I'm going to show you how to make some cool texture with some forks. So I just recycled it. Okay, I had it from uh, some some food that I was eating and I saved my fork. So I'm going to texture my uh, canvas with it later to show you guys how to create that rustic cool look. So what I want to show you guys are some other ideas before we get started because I, you guys know I'm going to draw mine out. So yes, look. There really are blue pumpkins. They're even almost bluish green, aren't they? Look at those cool colors, the cool textures. Ooh, I just want to go out now and buy one. So let's um, let me give you some ideas. You can paint on canvas. You can paint on canvas pad. You can paint on board. You can paint on wood. You can paint on anything you want. So look at that. You can add a word to it, right? Look at that. Totally different. It's not quite as blue. There's a lot more gray it's very cool, but that's how you customize it and make it your own. So you can change it however you want to. Here's an orange one, right? With a sunflower. Who doesn't love sunflowers? Look in the background. See the planks of wood, those vertical lines? There's more of them than I have. That's great. I love it. Again, you can change it and make it your own however you want to. Can you paint it on a coffee mug? Of course you can paint it on a coffee mug. Here's the thing, you guys, with the coffee mug. You got to use multi-surface paint, right? So I want you to use a paint, not just regular acrylic, not tempera. You have to use a paint called multi-surface and that will stick to anything. Now, when you guys paint, I do this a lot um, with my like in-person paint parties. If you paint on glass or a coffee mug or anything like that, you don't have to bake it to set the paint. If you just wait two weeks, the paint will set. So I don't like to bake it. I've tried it, but it changes the color. So sometimes the white turns like a brownish, even at a really low temperature. So again, multi-surface paint. You can paint it on your whatever surface and let it set for about two weeks and then it's good to go. You always want to hand wash anything hand painted for sure. Let's get some more ideas. Here's another one on wood. You can add a tag to it saying anything, right? Here's a sketchbook where you guys know I love my canvas pads. So here's a nice canvas pad that you can do. And again, practice it in your canvas pad. And then if you love it, do it on a real uh, canvas. 
Can you zentangle your pumpkins? Of course, why not add some zentangles to your pumpkins? All right, so that is just to inspire you guys and give you guys some ideas before we get started. And the reason why I want you to do that is so you guys can change it when we're practicing, right? So change it any way you want to. All right, so here we go. So you guys, mine is, again, mine is going to be vertical. And I am going to sketch out. So you guys, I want you to use a pencil, right? Because you can erase it. I'm going to use a Sharpie so you can see it better on the camera. So you, but I want you to be able to erase it. If I used a pencil, you would not be able to see it so great. So just again, think about the layout. I'm going to leave a little bit of room at the top for my, um, I don't want my stem to go all the way up. So let's start, let's start with like, Watch this. I'm going to start with a line here and I'm going to go down like this and back up. Can you see that? Kind of looks like a corn on the cob, doesn't it? <laughs> or something else. <laughs> uh, but that's going to be like the center shape. That's the biggest shape I'm going to use. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to go over, down, and up. That's the other side of the pumpkin. And I'm going to go here. Now I'm going to stop. And the reason why is because I'm going to end up drawing through my other pumpkin. So I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to add my other pumpkin. You guys can go down and connect it if you're using a pencil. Watch this. I'm going to do the stem, curly cue it, kind of like a double loop, like a roller coaster. We have a roller coaster here in Cleveland, Ohio called the double loop. I'm a fan of roller coasters. I love roller coasters where you go upside down, backwards, drop, the dropping, you know, but I still love it. Okay, so now here's my baby pumpkin over here. See how I didn't want it to, now again, yours can intersect because you have a pencil, but I can't erase Sharpie. So now pretend this line goes through your pumpkin and then you would finish that right there. So it's giving it the illusion of dimension. It looks like the little baby ones in front of your big pumpkin. And then I'm just going to put some leaves over here and they can go right off the edge of the paper if you want. Yours can be smaller. You don't have to add leaves. You could add sunflowers, whatever. You could add regular leaves. All right. So there's like the basic, and this is our sloppy copy. So don't worry if it's not perfect. It's never going to be perfect. There's our double loop again. Whoop -de -whoop -de -whoop. All right. That's silly, right? Just be silly and have fun. That's what it, we just want to have fun. Okay. Now, right now it's just floating on the paper. So let's do a horizontal line right here. Horizontal. So that would be like the table or the, the bottom of the fence, whatever it is. It could be sitting on the ledge of a fence. I'm going to do another horizontal line here. Horizontal. Oops. I, it started going diagonal. That's why we practice. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then again, for the fence lines, I'm going to do vertical line here, vertical, vertical. It doesn't have to be perfect. And if you guys want to use a ruler, use a ruler, right? Or you can use like the edge of your notebook. You can use another canvas. If you don't have a ruler, cardboard, whatever it is you guys have, use it, right? All right. Okay, so there's my sloppy copy. How's everybody doing? Let me go over here. Hi, Irina, Emma, and Bella. All right. So now there's my sloppy copy. Now I'm going to do it on my canvas. I'm going to move my sloppy copy. Got it? And there's no right or wrong where you're going to start. So now you have, again, the basic idea. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. So why don't we just start with the baby pumpkin this time? So watch. I'm going to do an arched line here. 
like that. And then I'm going to sketch in the, that leaf over here. So when something is in front of your picture, that's called the foreground. So the foreground on this, the closest thing to me would be the leaves, right? So the, that's, and they can go right off the edge of your page, right off the edge of your canvas. Sketch it out in pencil. If you want to trace over it with Sharpie, go ahead, but I'm just doing it in Sharpie so you can see it. Okay. Let's do the other side of the pumpkin, like here. Don't forget the stem with the curly Q. Curly Q. Curly, curly, curly Q. And then we could do that bottom horizontal line. And if you guys want to use a ruler, go ahead. Doesn't have to be perfect. Right? All right. Now let's do the bigger pumpkin. Let's start again with that big center shape. So I'm going to go down, around, back up. Oh, I forgot. Did I sketch out the leaves on the other side of the other one? Let's add the leaves to the, I don't think I did that on the other one, but that's okay. You don't even have to have them on both sides unless you want to. And you could even do autumn colored leaves. They don't have to be green. The leaves are just starting to change colors here. I, all right, you guys, I love summer. Summer goes by way too fast. I do love autumn. I love pumpkin spice coffee and I love the colors outside. I love the fresh, crisp autumn air. And, uh, but I do love summer. Summer is number one, but uh, and the clothes, the pretty colored clothes. Yeah. All right. So because my pumpkin is going behind the greenery, right? So that gives it the illusion of depth. Let's put the other part of the pumpkin over here. And then our stem curve around, right? Now, if you want to add, again, we could add details later, but if you like those lines in here, I could put a black line and maybe three little dots. That's just like small details. Yes, me too. I love the changing of the colors. So one, two, three little dots, curved a line, maybe two little dots. These are just details, just fun little designs to add to your pumpkin if you want. Remember, if you want. All right, so again, I'm just putting three little dots. I'm gonna do them black later, but I just wanna sketch them on there so you have an idea of what I'm doing. Three little dots and a curved line. Maybe two dots, curve, curve. Oh, and then don't forget about the fence in the back, right? So your fence, again, it doesn't matter. Your stem could be below that line. It could overlap into it, horizontal line. If you want, use a ruler, sketch it out. And then we're gonna do a vertical line and stop when you meet, you know, you want it to be behind it, again, to give the illusion of depth. And I'll show you how to add that texture to make it look like your fence is weathered. But you don't have to, right? You don't have to make it look textured, but it's really fun to do. All right, so let's keep rolling here. How are you guys doing, you guys? All right, so I'm gonna use acrylic paint. So what I have here, I have actually two different blues and it's okay if you don't have two different blues but I thought it looked kind of cool two tone like that so two different blues two different greens some yellow and you could mix the yellow and the green if you don't have two different greens you can mix them in the green to make it yellow green I have a really pretty gold but you don't have to make gold but I'm gonna sneeze <laughs> excuse me I was trying you know when that tickle comes and you're like go away Go away. Is it coming? Is it going? Am I going to sneeze? Am I not going to sneeze? I guess I'm going to sneeze. Woo! All right. But you know what? Then when it finally does come, you're like, yeah, that felt good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. All 
Oh my gosh, you guys, the texture on the fence. So let me tell you, if you have a plastic fork, I, I'm going to use a plastic fork. I went to Chipotle and I saved my fork. That's where this is from. Okay. So I wash off the beans and the guacamole <laughs> and then, or you can try a knife. I have a knife too, or you can try a palette knife, but I'm going to show you at the end, we're going to do the texture and it's really fun. So, um, again, I have here my crafts for, um, all look at all these colors. Okay. So I have 24 beautiful colors. So I have a variety, um, to choose from, but it's okay. If you don't have this many colors, uh, it's okay if you just have a few colors, but I do like, here's what I want you to think of the contrast between the green and the blue. So if you only have one green and one blue, you may want to make your green a little more yellow green to make it look different than the background color, right? So I'm going to do the entire background first and don't worry if you cover up your lines, I'm not going to wet the brush. I'm going to use the dry brush. Okay. And I'm going to, just scoop up some blue on my brush, right? And I'm going to paint in the background. Now, that's pretty, pretty. So that's just one blue. Now, what if I scoop up some, some more blue to give it a little bit, do you see that? To give it a little bit more two-tone look. And I'm using vertical brush strokes. See how cool that looks? So when you're giving it like a two-tone look, but it's okay if you don't have two blues. You again, you can use one blue, maybe you lighten it with a little bit of white. And I'm going to paint around my leaves, but it's okay if you accidentally go over them, or if you just want to paint over them, go over it later. Now, I want to show you guys something. If I keep doing this and this and this and this and this, watch this, it's going to turn into one color. Did you know that? If you keep going over and over and over it, it's going to blend together, right? Well, I don't like it blend together. I like that two-tone look. And maybe I put a little bit of white in there. Let's bring it back. See that? But if I keep going over and over and over it, I lose that cool effect. So if you did it like me, if you just kept going over and over it, just go back into it just like we started and add more. Use your vertical brush strokes. And use your, you could do your background, your favorite colors. I just thought the blue was really pretty, right? That's why, you know, I'm wearing blue today. I'm trying, I'm trying to match my painting. Now you don't, if you're going to do your pumpkin really pale blue, you don't want your background to get too light, right? So I'm just going around my pumpkins. Did you guys have a good weekend? Well, actually it's already, can't believe it's already midweek. And if you're watching this recorded, hey, who knows what day of the week it is. So if you guys are watching me live, you can't pause it, right? You can't pause, you can't rewind it. So don't worry if I'm going too fast for you because it is recorded and you can watch it later, you guys. I like to paint the edge of my canvas. Today I'm not using the canvas pad because I do um, like to hang these up and I find that um, it's it's easier for me to hang up when it's on canvas, but the canvas pad is really nice because uh, it's so thin. You can pop it in a frame. You can change your artwork every time the season changes, right? I love to change the artwork in my house according to the seasons. So, oh, I got my bucket out for the autumn. I can't wait to put everything out. So I'm painting around my leaves. I 
And then even if it looks a little too, you know, like not blended, it's okay because I'm going to scrape it up with some, some more stuff later with my fork. It's really fun. I highly recommend it. So I think I forgot to draw the rest of my pumpkin in over here. You guys are supposed to remind me, right? So I think the, the rest of this pumpkin over here should be right around there. So you guys can see it, right? So I don't want to paint that. And if I do, that's okay. I could paint over, or, you know, I can fix it. You guys know we can fix any little mistakes we make. And I do like to paint the side. All right, let's keep going. Keep going. Again, use your favorite colors. And it doesn't even have to be acrylic. You guys do not have to be using acrylic paint. You can use watercolor paint. You can use temper paint. You can use crayons, whatever makes you happy. Just relax and have fun. So what are some ways to change your, oop, I look at that, I just made a big bloop. Could you see I just went inside of the line? It's okay, I'll fix it later. But if you can't tell, look, I'm just gonna leave it alone. Again, I'm gonna just kind of mix two different blues together and vertical brush strokes. You can even use three different blues. So I was started to say, what if you don't have different blues? You can make them. So if you have blue and white, you can mix them together and make a lighter blue. You can, if you have green, you can mix blue and green together and make a bluish green or turquoise. If you have purple, you can mix purple and blue together and get like an ultramarine blue. So there's lots of ways to change your blue. If you don't have green, you can take some yellow and some blue and it'll turn like a bluish green. It's fun to experiment, just experiment. I love mixing colors. All right. See how the solid that is right there. And again, it's okay because I'm gonna put some. I'm gonna put some more color on it later. And again, if you're gonna do your leaves green, just think about the colors that you're painting around it. so that your green has contrast, so your green shows up. And if you do want to paint your pumpkin spice coffee mug with this, you can always practice first, right? I wouldn't say practice on your coffee mug, but it, the thing, the nice thing about that paint is, you guys, it's washable. If you don't, if you paint it and you don't like it, wash it off and then do it again. But I would still practice first. I always practice. I can't wait to eat pumpkin seeds. I love pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin spice coffee. I kind of like everything pumpkin. Who am I kidding? All right. I think there's a little blue in here. All right. How's yours coming? Are you guys good? All right. Now, what I'm going to do across the top real quick is I'm going to paint. Remember, I was doing vertical, but now I'm just going to kind of go over this horizontal, change the direction. So I'm trying to give it that rustic wood look. So I didn't even wash off my brush. I scooped a little bit of white on it just to show that it's a little bit different than the rest of it. 
I didn't even wash it off. I'm just changing the direction. So your brush strokes are now going horizontal. See that? And you could do the same thing across the bottom. Use horizontal brush strokes. A little white on my brush. I get, you guys, I get paint on my easel all the time. That's all right. I don't bother. I think it adds character to it. And again, I like to paint the side of my canvas. Then I don't have to worry about framing it. They do sell canvas frames, but I just usually hang them up without the frame. Or you can stand it up on the counter. So I forgot to paint on top here. All right, I'm gonna do the leaves before I do my pumpkins. Just to kind of fill them in. All right, and then we'll fill in our pumpkins. And again, if you guys have one green, that's fantastic. If you don't have green, you can make it with blue and yellow. Can you see that? So if you're not getting as much contrast as you want, again, change your green. How would you do that? Well, you could add more blue to it. You could add yellow to it, make it a yellow green. You could add white to it. Let's put some little baby leaves over here. Now I'm going to just do, well, let's do the leaves on the other side too. Irina says she loves the colors in the painting. And probably I'm probably a Bella too. I love this, the blues too. So that's why I thought I love the blues, like singing the blues. No, I don't, no, I don't like the blues, <laughs> but I like the blues in this. Blues make me sad. Blues and songs, you know. I got the blues. Blues Brothers I like. All right. So, look, I'm going to do the, these green. And, again, it's so flat because I'm just using one. That's why I like to two-tone it. But let me just get the basic green down. You guys can paint in your pumpkin before you do your greens. I just wanted to give you an idea of where I was going with this. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a darker green to do my stem. Okay, you can use black and I'll, I will still, or you can use a darker green or you can um, mix black with your green to get it a little bit darker. And I didn't even wash off my brush because again, I love when the colors mix together like that. So I'm just putting the, it's like a darker hunter green right down the center of it. You see that? So if you guys want, you can even add some into your leaves. So they're not such a flat green, right? I love to see the marks. I love to see the chunky paint. So it makes it more interesting. I'm going to hold it up close so you can see it. See how you can see the chunks of paint? And you can see my mistakes too, right? Is that okay? Yes, that's okay. Oh, bless me. <laughs> I just saw that you guys said bless me. Thank you. I appreciate that from when I sneezed. Thank you. All right. Now, you guys know I like to wait for the black, but let's do 
felt, again, I'm not even going to wash off my brush. I'm just going to scoop up a little bit of yellow. And I'm just going to put a little, maybe just little yellow touches in here. You can even blend it in if you want to. It just gives it a little character, doesn't it? Maybe wherever I have canvas peeking through, I could just cover it up with some yellow, brighten it up a little. And again, I'm going to do it on the other side too, because I like and that yellow against the blue just really gives it a little bit of bling, doesn't it? It just kind of brightens it up. And you guys are probably just dying to outline it with black, but you know, I don't want to do it just yet. I don't want to do the black just yet. Now, if you guys, and again, I want you to use whatever colors you have. Do you have gold? Because if you have gold, gold is so pretty on this picture. So if you do have gold, you guys can add gold. Again, I'm letting my background dry, dry before I use a fork on it, but um, you can use gold on the stem as well as in the background. All right, so hang on, I gotta, <laughs> I'm losing my voice. Okay, so I'm gonna take some gold. I have a really pretty gold. But again, you guys can use whatever you have. So this is what I'm gonna use for my um, stem. This is De Deco Art Extreme Sheen Gold, okay? I'm going to use that, but again, you don't have to. I'm going to use that on this. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? You guys forgot to tell me I missed this part. Hey, I missed a part. So what am I going to do? I'm going to fill it in. You know it. See, but I thought it would have had time to dry. So now I'm going to come back to that section. Because you know I'm not the neatest painter, so I would end up bumping into that blue and getting blue all in my stem. So we'll come back to this part, but we could do this one. And I didn't realize it until I got over there. All right. So let's do this stem. I'll show you. So I'm going to use my gold, but you don't. Have, if you don't have gold, it's okay. I'm going to paint my stem in gold. Now, if your paint is still wet around it, just be careful. It's so pretty. I'm going to hold it up close so you can see it. I'll hold the wet one up and then I'll hold the dry one up so you can see it. You see that? Look, can you see it sparkle? And the dry one probably looks a little bit more metallic. So let me show you the dry one. And you can put as many coats on as you want. Can you see the dry one, how it's metallic? And I have it in the background too. All right. So again, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be careful. I'm gonna go slow. Sometimes I go too fast and I talk too much. Sh <laughs> shocking. And then I bump into stuff. But I'm gonna fill it in. And I'm really not worried about the edge so much because I'm gonna outline it with black. So you, you, the black will hide all my mistakes. So I'm not worried about it. I'm going to outline over all the places I went inside the, see it, I just bumped into the blue. Do you see that? No one's going to know it's not supposed to be there. It's our secret, right? Look, I'm just going to, it's a happy little accident. I'm just mixing it right in there. No one knows. All right. Let's, so again, because I just painted the blue around here. Now, if you don't have gold, what else could you use? Brown, you can use brown. You can make a green stem. Heck, you can make a purple stem because it's your artwork, you guys. You could do silver. I just think the, the gold looks so pretty with the blue background. I 
All right, so there's my gold. And then, you guys, we can fill in the pumpkins. Now, remember, that big splitch that I just made, the splitch of blue. <laughs> Do you like splitch? So my splitch of blue, I'm going to outline it with black. So it doesn't matter. I'm going to cover it up. So you guys, we can always fix any of our mistakes. So don't sweat the small stuff, right? Now, I'm going to start filling in my pumpkin with a really pale blue. Do I have a different blue? No, it's the same blue. I'm going to add white to it. So I'm just going to lighten it up by taking some of my... Um, same blue and put some white in it and then i'll have a softer blue because remember we want it to be different than the background so you could just mix it up some white and some blue so when you add white to a color it's called a tint t-i-n-t -T, a tint of a color so this is like a value painting right so look i'm going to do it but see that i think i should make it even lighter and now look, my brush stroke is following the direction of my pumpkin. So it gives it more dimension when you do that. You see that? So when my brush stroke follows that line, that shape, it just looks better. It, it gives it more dimension. See that? I'm just painting right over my lines. I'm going to paint around my leaves and again don't worry too much because we're going to outline it and now you you already have your first decoration for the season right this could stay up for months september october november and then we got to switch after thanksgiving you know what comes after thanksgiving you guys so, I would definitely have, I have pumpkins up from September, October, and November. And then Thanksgiving's over, wham, it goes right to Christmas. Winter, snowmen, I don't want to talk about snow, but let's just focus on the beautiful autumn right now. <laughs> See again how my brush stroke is just following the direction of that pumpkin. Just have fun with it. I probably, yeah. I was going to say, I probably went down a little too far on my table, but no one knows but you guys. So I probably should put a little dark blue back here. Or see right there, that little hole right there probably should be this. See that? So it looks like my pumpkin. Like, so that... My pumpkin ends right there. All right, let's keep going. Are you having fun with this? Now, even if you guys have raffia, you know, you can even add like raffia to your pumpkin with like a hot glue gun. Or again, you can add a, a, a word to it. Let me finish my pumpkin and I'll show you some of the pictures again to give you some inspiration. We'll give this a minute to dry. Just go around here. All right. That kind of looks funny right there, doesn't it? But remember, I'm going to outline it. Better? 
not as lumpy. All right, so let's let's take a peek at some. You guys, let's look at again. Let's give you some inspiration. Just different ways you can do this. All right, so look. You guys can wait for it to dry and do Zen Tangles. Use your Sharpies or paint. I like Sharpies, but on dry. Don't do it on wet or you're going to ruin your Sharpie, right? How about in your um, art pad, right? I love those art pads. So you guys can do it in your pad. Look at the leaves. Look at all the little dots. Way more dots than I have. You guys can add a tag to it. Okay, you can make a tag, you can do it on a cricket, you can hand do your letters, you can add ribbon to it. Again, we talked about a coffee mug with multi-surface paint. You guys can add sunflowers, you can add different colors. Add again, it doesn't even have to be a real tag, it could be a hand drawn painted blessed and look at all the different colors in the pumpkin and most of that fence in the background is gray gray is black and white right and look at the leaves on that one totally different and those are just some ways you guys can change it up customize it and make it your own all right so let's go back let me do my baby pumpkin my baby pumpkin I'm gonna fix that I didn't like that but a little better my baby pumpkin All right, now, oh, that looks pretty white up here, doesn't it? I did paint, I did paint there, but I'm gonna make it a little bit more blue. It looks pretty white, doesn't it? Better? Maybe I put a little more white in here. Right, you can always lighten it or darken it. How's it coming? All right, just painting this puts me in a good mood. Are you guys in a good mood? Woo-wee, I'm so happy. All right, I know you're dying to outline it. So, Use the smallest little brush you have, or if you don't have a tiny little brush, you guys can always wait for it to dry and then outline it with a Sharpie, right? But I'm going to use a little brush and some black paint, and I'm going to start outlining it. And really, that's just going to clean up all my, my edges. See how it all of a sudden it just kind of pops out, right? It's amazing what black can do. So I'm just kind of outlining it here. There's my loop-de-loop, loop-de-loop. Go around here, outline it. See how it just pops it out? Just cleaning up those edges.
You can do it here too. I'm going to outline the whole thing. You guys know it's going to take me a little bit of time to outline it. Patience, patience, patience. Go slow. And again, if you want to outline it with marker, just wait for it to dry. Let's do the loop-de-loop, loop-de-loop, loop-de-loop. And you know, wherever it doesn't look dark enough, like here, I kind of lost my line, so I'm just gonna go over it. Make it a little bit thicker. Outline your leaves. And you know what? Not every single leaf has to be outlined, right? You could just randomly, like I'm going to do the vine down the middle, even though I did the dark green, I'm going to add some black in there. Then I can outline just some of the leaves. I can outline more of them, whatever you want. Maybe just the bottom of them. How's it coming, you guys? Are you having fun? Are you relaxed? I should have really got a pumpkin drink for today. I didn't have one. All right. Let's keep going. But do you, you, I know you guys can see what a difference that black makes, right? I mean, so that's why you just never want to worry about making a mistake or the edges or a smear because you can cover it up. That's what I love about acrylic is that you can fix anything. And you guys, it's the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it, right? Like anything else, like cooking or yoga or reading or math, the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. So look, just for decoration, I'm going to put another line here. Now you guys can paint three dots. I'm going to use the handle. I'm going to flip the handle over and I'm going to go dot, dot, dot. Now, if it's not perfect, I'll, it's not perfect, but I'm just going to go over it again. Just for a little design. Do you see that? How about right here? So uh, oh, let me flip it back over. Thin little line here. And then dip and dot. I could do I could just do two dots. Then I can finish my line. Go down like that. So again, I'm just it's just a detail. It's just adding like a design to it. Now I add a little line here. Curve line here. Dip my handle into the black. One, two, three. One, two. Again, two or three, whatever you want. Or maybe you're doing the Zentangles. Are you doing the Zentangles? I want to see. 
I want to see the Zentangles. Who's going to do that? I'm going to outline a little bit more over here. See this right here? I'm going to outline just a little bit more. Can you guys hear that? Of course, they have to landscape. That's why I don't go outside and do my art classes anymore. Remember when I used to go outside? But it's so hard, you guys, with between the weather, the wind, and the landscapers. They make a lot of noise. What are you going to do? Could you please go away? Could you go landscape somewhere else and come back in an hour? Yeah, I wish. It's not my yard. It's not. It's not like I could say. Don't landscape on Wednesdays. Right? See, he heard me. Did you know that? He heard me. Did you hear me? <laughs> How do you know? Could you guys hear that? All right, it's not bad. It's coming along, isn't it? Oh my gosh. I'm gonna, is that, I'm gonna guess, let me see, I'll go in my Facebook group here. I see a comment, but when you guys are on a, when you're not, when I'm not reading your comments in our group, I can't see who's doing it. So someone just posted something really sweet. Groups. Let's see if I can find you guys. Susan, I knew that was you. Susan says, I still can't believe sometimes that we get to paint with you. You make I the... Ooh, doing I just turned my video on. <laughs> Don't do that. Hold on. I meant to hit see more. You make this so easy to understand and you teach us super techniques. You explain things in an easy to understand way. You make learning fun. That's and you know what? Sometimes. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Susan, thank you. You're so sweet and you make me feel so good. So, and Irina, thank you. Irina says you're so lucky too. And you guys are going to make me cry. I, you know, I haven't cried in so long. Don't make me cry today. But that's so sweet, you guys. I do it because I love to do it. And I love doing it with you guys because it's so much fun. So um, thank you. And I, I really, I, I, I love your sweet comments. It's just, you guys make me feel so good. So thank you. All right, you know what? I'm gonna put a little bit more before I ball my eyes out. I'm gonna put a little bit more over here. A little more details over here, okay? Dot, dot. Ooh, did you see that big black hunk <laughs> that got stuck on my handle? Dot, dot, dot. That's really fun. I probably could do that all day long, right? All those little dipping dots, dipping dots, dipping dot, dipping dot. All right, now this is the really fun part, you guys. All right, where's my where's my Chipotle fork? <laughs> but you guys, any fork will do. It doesn't even have to be a fork. It could be a knife, whatever you have. I'm just gonna um scoop up. I gotta probably get some more white paint, but I'm just gonna put. Look at my fork. It's all mixed together, right? You guys, this is so much fun. Just be careful of the wet black. So I don't, you can either wait and do it um, when it's dry, or you can do it now and just be really careful. So watch. So look, I just scooped up some, I just rubbed my fork in the paint, okay? And watch this. I'm just going to do that. Do you see that? And it gives it this cool texture. Look at that. Okay. And it, it's up to you. Oh, if you say, oh, that's too much weight. What do you do? You go over it with another color. But again, that's just the beginning because I'm going to layer some different colors. Look at that. So you guys, I'm doing it so that the curved part of the fork is against the canvas. Right? All right. So now I'm going to do it vertical. You hear that texture? And, right? And you don't want it to be even. I'm going to scoop up a little more. Again, this is something I could probably do. Don't overdo it, even though it's so fun. So I'm going to do it again. 
That's all that's not right here. All right, let's do some on the bottom. Oop, I got a little yellow in it. Does it matter? No. I accidentally bumped into my yellow. I'm going to hold it up and show you. Because I didn't mean to. But no one knows, right? Remember we talked about that. Happy little accident. Look it. I got a blob of yellow in there. But no one, who cares? I don't know if I got it from my plate, my hand, or from bumping into a leaf. But it doesn't matter. Because no one knows that it wasn't my intention. I'm telling you guys, because it's our secret. I trust you. <laughs> All right. So look at now how kind of how splotchy it looks, right? Well, you might like that. That's fine if you like that. But I want to um, do some more colors. So what if I do, I'm going to do the gold next, and then I'll do the black, because I don't want to mix the gold over the black. So I might have to put some more gold on my plate. This is what I'm using, but you guys can use anything. It's that extreme sheen. Ooh. Hold on. All right, so I gave it a little shake, squeeze it out of the styrofoam plate, put my fork in it. I didn't even wash my fork off. If you want to wash your fork off, go ahead. I'm not going to. I'm a little lazy, right? All right, so look. Like to me, that's too much gold, right? So what could I do? Well, I can add some more blue to it later. I'm not even going to bother wiping it off. I'm just going to leave it because I want to put some black on it. Dip some more gold in there. So I'm doing horizontal on, it, on the plank on top, right? You want to do horizontal on the bottom. I'm using a fork. Just to give it a little texture. Just giving it that weathered look. That's how I'm doing that. Just randomly putting my fork on there. And then I switch my fork direction depending on where I'm painting. So like I feel like I need a little bit more gold over here. Vertical. So use as much gold as you want, right? Put a little over here. I actually, so I've been giving my paintings to the Amazon driver when they drop stuff off. This one I'm actually making for a fundraiser. So my friend is coming over later and picking up some paintings for a fundraiser she's doing. Um, so you guys think about what you could, you can make it for a gift for someone. It could be your holiday decoration, right? All right. Now I'm going to do a little bit of black, but again, here's what I want to show you. If you overdid a certain area, you can just go back into it with more blue, right? Like right here. Uh, let me wipe some of this off right here. So if it's too solid, I could go back over it. See that? And just break it up with some more blue. I love texture. I love that one. Right? Did you see how I just broke that solid piece of um, gold up? So same thing on the bottom. If it's too, if I got too gold, I got too carried away because it was so fun. I could just go back into it with more blue. Break up some of that. Right here a little bit. Just don't make it look like a pattern, right? You want it to be like rustic and you want it to be uneven. All right, last, I'm gonna do some black. So now I'm gonna take my fork. Dip it in black. Go slow with the black. You guys, I want you to be careful with the black, right? All right, here we go. Go slow with the black. So I'm going to do horizontal up here. Okay. 
That's a little thick. What I tell you to do? Well, I can break up that black in a little bit with some glue. Once you guys start this, it's easy to overdo because it's so fun. I have to tell you, the first time I did this, I was kind of nervous to use the fork on my painting because I like my painting so much. I was like, I'm going to ruin it. I'm going to ruin it. But I just did it. I was like, what's the worst that could happen? I do it again? Yeah. So I just did it. And then I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so much fun. We have to do more fork paintings, <laughs> right? So this one, you guys can tell I added more black to this one. And you guys, it's just a different way to do it, right? So if I am patient and I let it dry a little bit, I can put a little bit more gold on top of that black and it'll look really cool. All right, now I'm gonna go back to my outlining because I want my fence, right? So go slow. Oh, I forgot to give you guys the link. Hold on. Let me get the link. I forgot. I was having so much fun. All right. Let's see where you guys are today. All right, let's see if you guys can see that. You got, can you guys see the link? All right. Let me finish outlining. And you guys could always also put like the little um, divots in your fence. Like nail marks. If you want to put nail marks in your fence, you could add nail marks. I'm trying to think where my line was roughly. Not that it matters, but it's probably a little crooked. And that adds to the rustic part, right? So I feel like the butt, this part here is a little too black. So I'm gonna grab a paper towel, wipe off this black off my fork. I gotta get a, hold on one sec. Okay, I'm gonna wipe, I'm gonna wipe the fork off. And look who's here, I'm on Bella. Hey girls. Hello. Hello. How's it going over there? Good. Right now I'm working on the leaves of my painting. Yeah. I can show you first because I have this little tiny supplies. Okay. Oh, look at those colors. Oh my gosh. I love the purples and pinks. I also shaded with the green. That is so beautiful. Look at this um, color on the bottom. So is that like a grayish turquoise? It, it kind of is. Yeah. Guess which, which color she mixed to get this. I, 
fifty. All right, what color? What colors did you mix? It was pink, purple, and green. It's beautiful. Oh my gosh, I love that. That's a frame. I know it. <laughs> oh well, it's gonna go on the wall. To <gasps> oh, I haven't seen your wall in a while. These, yeah, this is a different wall, but you know, the art is exploding all over the house. Yay! We love exploding art. And here oh. is mine. Oh, oh, I love the kitty. That's your kitty, your new kitty. Which I forgot your cat's name. She is probably running around. Oh, oh no, oh, she's oh, sleeping she's... in her little crib. Oh, she's sleeping. Don't wake her up. <laughs> She's leaving. Don't make her out, Bella. What's her name? Ebony? Luna. Luna! Bell! All right, I gotta remember Luna, Luna, Luna. Yeah, because she's loony. <laughs> I love it. Hold up your painting one more time. Well, show the painting again. I love that. That's so cute. Oh my gosh. It's too it's sweet. But, yeah. I love the tail wrapping around the pumpkin. Isn't it so cool how they're, they're painting from the same lesson, but again, their works are so different. So different and so beautiful as always. And we just love when you share with us. We definitely will. Thanks so much, you guys. Thank you, Denise. Thank you. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye. Do you guys love seeing that as much as I do? Isn't it amazing how different everyone's comes out, right? So, um, I was going to, what was I going to do? Oh, let's get a little bit more gold. Well, first, so I think mine's too dark. Now I want to make mine purple and I want to put a cat in it. <laughs> but look, I have plenty of blue left here. So I'm going to take a little bit more blue on my fork. So see how dark the bottom is here? I could just go back into it with some blue. So it's not so dark and I could do the same thing on the top if I want to, maybe just a little bit right here. A little bit more right here. All right. And if there's anything you want to highlight, let me get some white out. Um, so if you guys just want to highlight a little bit more, so here, this is a highlight, highlight on the stem, maybe a highlight on the other stem. So I'm just going to take a touch more of the white, just a touch. You don't need a lot. And again, I'm just going to highlight some of it and then I'm done. All right. So how about put a little highlight here? Do you see that? Can you see that? You could put it in, in here. What about over here? Put a little highlight right there. Ross, wherever you want, that's where else. Wherever you want to add your highlight, go ahead. You don't even have to highlight it if you don't want to. Touch it up, re-outline anything. I'm going to do the bottom of this pumpkin. I think I kind of lost it right there. All right, you guys. So there is your autumn blue artwork for today. Thank you guys so much for creating with me and watching and having fun. It was a great day and I look forward to creating with you again. Thank you, Irina, Emma, and Bella for sharing your artwork with us. You guys have a beautiful, blessed day. Wash out your brushes, right? Let everything dry nicely. Hey, John. And um, keep creating. And again, if you guys did what I did and painted the edges, make sure, I already forgot, make sure 
yeah, make sure you get the bottom. I forgot to paint the bottom, right? Especially since I'm going to do give it as a fundraiser. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to paint the bottom of it. And then again, that way I don't have to frame it. So you guys, again, keep creating, sign your artwork, give it a title, and I will see you again real soon. Thanks so much. Bye.